NFL Week 1 Best Games Preview. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on all of these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six, incredible sports books. Gold Strike Casino, Horseshoe Casino, Sam's Town, Hollywood, First Jackpot, opening soon, the sports book at the Fitz. All of them are nice. We've been to all of them. We checked them all out. They all cool. Go down to whichever one you want to go to. That's right. You can watch games at any of them, right? Yeah, no. That's I like them. I like them. We were down with it. Get more information over at tunicatravel.com. Check that thing out. Let's jump right in. Game number one. First game of the season. Thursday, Thursday night. night. Falcons at Eagles. Eagles at two and a half point favorite. That line opened up at four. It's been bet down to two and a half. Nah, it didn't get bet down to two and a half. They changed it when they officially named Foles the starter. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of money on the Falcons. Okay. Vegas money. Either way, over-under is 45 and a half. It's Thursday, September 6th at 7.20 p.m. on NBC, Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Carson Wentz ain't quite ready to come back. So, like you said, Nick Foles will be the starter. The Eagles offense played incredibly vanilla in the preseason. Seriously doubt that's going to have any impact on this game whatsoever. Uh, Second-year offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian. Wide receiver Calvin Ridley joins Julio Jones and Matt Ryan in Atlanta. There's a lot that's going to go on here. How do you feel about this game? What do we need to look for? I think the Eagles' defense is the cream of the crop in the NFL. It's up there with maybe the two or three best defenses in the league. Vikings, Jags. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think they're just incredibly talented. Um, and it, offensively, they're, they got a lot of guys hurt. That they're not going to look the same as they looked last year. But they didn't have any stars on offense other than Nick Foles and, and, and Carson Wentz. They just found a way to make this thing work. Um, I think that's what they're going to do again this year. That's kind of how I feel. And I think the Eagles I don't think are Foles has to do much. Just fine. No, he didn't have to do much in most of the games that they, they played. In the Super Bowl, he had to do a lot. He had to do a whole oh, lot. Yeah. And he did. He did everything he needed to do. Well, they, they pulled out all the stops in that one. That's right. I'll, I'll tell you this. Interesting number I'm going to give you. Okay. 8.67 points per game. That is the number of points that the Falcons scored on average against the top three defenses in the league last year. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, they played the Vikings. They almost got blanked in all those they, games. They played the Vikings, scored nine points. They played the Patriots, scored seven points. They scored... Or they uh, they played the Eagles in the playoffs mm-hmm. and scored ten points. Yep, eight point six seven points per game against the top five defenses. Not good. Not good. Not good. If they don't put up a whole bunch of points here, you know how I feel about Sarkeesian. You know oh, how I, know. I feel about the Falcons and their offensive abilities. I, I just think so much of this is scheme. He is really good in college. He can't. He cannot hang with the defensive coordinators in the NFL. You might be right about that. Now, I, I, now they got talent out the yin-yang. They should be better on offense than they are. When they led the NFL in third down conversions last year, That's third down true. third down completion or uh, 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 percentage, which was like over 45%, which is absurd if you think about it. Mm. But even still, they couldn't score against good defenses. That's right. You can't put it in the end zone. None of the rest of the stats no, None of it matters. None of it matters. Uh, who, I'm guessing you like the Eagles. I take the Eagles. It stays That's, under a field goal. I take the Eagles. Same here. Same here. E- even at a field goal, I might first championship in in in, in the history of the Eagles. That that stadium they're gonna be fired going up. to be rocking. Game number two, the Steelers minus five. What is that down to now? No, nah, it was five last About five? last night. It was four. Nope, last night it was four. So it, it was five today. Well, I don't know today. I hadn't looked. It was it was last night that I got that five. But that was before we went to the casino. Last night when I was in Tunica, I got it at four, four and a half. Okay. All right, so we'll say Steelers minus four. Even number, whatever. Uh, at the Browns, over-under is 46 and a half. Sunday, September the 9th, noon game on CBS at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. Le'Veon Bell still has not reported. That That's, is a uh, big deal. This is Tuesday evening, man. Yeah. Now, I, uh, Pouncey did come out and say, like, ah, he'll be here by Wednesday. And they said, like, what, did he tell you that? Or he said, No. Uh, I'm just, like I don't actually know. 
Just I'm just guessing. guessing. Like kind of hoping. He said, I, if I know Le'Veon, he'll be here by Wednesday. So Mike Lombardi has a saying. I listen to his podcast, and I read a lot of the stuff that he writes for The Ringer. He has a saying, hoping is not a game plan. <laughs> and there are a lot of teams, if, if you listen to him talk and he breaks down filming these guys, there's a lot of teams – that don't really prepare. They just think, oh, our guys are better than their guys. We're going to go out there and we're going to figure this thing out. Hoping is not a game plan, and I think that's what the Steelers are trying to do with Le'Veon right now, and it makes me feel so much better being a Cleveland fan. Now, by the time this video comes out, like he might have actually reported. That's correct. But as right now, Tuesday he's only going to have like two days of practice. 10 p.m. God standard time. Yeah. James Conner is the backup. They're talking high about him, but like – there, there I is no know the question between how late can he show up and still be allowed to play. I'd go with probably Thursday. Because if he's not there by that day, what happens to the number? How much does he move it? And I think that's why the number has moved as low as it was. One of the books we were at, Sam Actually took it off the board. They actually took, like, while we were there, I was walking up there, and it went from on the board to off the board. Yeah. It was, it was strange to see because we didn't understand – what happened? Like, what news happened? Who got hurt? What changed? And so, of we course, we're there. sitting in there on our phones like, what is... Yeah, what happened? What what happened? And, and nothing the, happened. It's the, just that he hadn't reported yet. I, I think it is. Le'Veon hadn't reported yet. He said he was going to report by Labor Day. He hadn't. and Or not, he didn't say that. The team said he was. But he never showed up. He never showed up. It, a lot of people today were talking about how him not showing up, his agent might be trying to pull like what Oakland did with Khalil Mack. Yeah, get a trade. Like it, we want a trade. I want, I want years. I want security. I'm tired of this franchise and crap. Yeah. I mean, if I was making as much as he is on the franchise tag. Yeah, but you're broke, man. It's one thing. It's different. You and I. You give me fourteen I mean, million dollars. Yeah. There's not a whole lot in this world I wouldn't do. <laughs> That's you got a good point. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, Josh Gordon, Jarvis Landry, Carlos Hyde, entirely new team in Cleveland. I know you're this all is, about these boys. This is, this is not your daddy's Browns. The right Steelers here. are replacing offensive coordinator Todd Haley, who is now with the Browns. That's right. Uh, with That's quarterback right. coach and Big Ben friend Randy Feedner. That's right. Do you ben think it makes to, any difference? Yeah, Ben likes to surround himself with yes men who won't hold him accountable and who won't coach him hard. And 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 I think that's a bad thing for the Steelers' offense. I absolutely think it is bad to surround yourself with your friends that are just going to tell you what you want to hear and not hold you accountable. I think you're probably People right. Didn't like, he didn't like Todd Haley because Todd yelled at him all the time. Well, Ben, if you didn't have a big waterhead and make stupid decisions <laughs> and hold on to football all day long, then you wouldn't get yelled at. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, the, there's a part of me that likes the Steelers in this game solely because, like even without Le'Veon Bell, solely because of how much hype the Browns are getting. I understand. Like I totally it, get when the, the public hype is crazy. Yeah, when the public is so yeah, hard one-sided. knocks does that every year. Hard knocks makes you believe in a team that you shouldn't believe in. And I we're just gonna we're gonna be clear. I understand. Cleveland has a head coaching problem. Okay. I I, trust, I didn't know if you were gonna agree with that or I not. I trust Haley immensely. I think he's the best offensive mind that has been in that locker room in a long time. He should be the head coach. He's more qualified to be the head coach. And I don't trust you at all. I'm hoping that talent and the coordinators can can just make this ship go well enough to overcome the problems with you. I like that. That was really well thought. We, we are a really good coach away from being great. We being the Browns. We just being so the, everybody knows. We being my Cleveland Browns. The 49ers at the Vikings. Vikings are a six-point favorite. The over-under is 46-and-a-half. That is another Sunday game, September 9th, 12 p.m. on Fox, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Story of this game is going to be Jimmy G, his undefeated record. He was 5-0 and to end last season, and Kyle Shanahan's year two offense against the Vikings' number one defense. Kirk Cousins, first game as the Vikings quarterback. Dalvin Cook uh, returns from injury. Vikings lost nobody from a defense that was number one in just about everything last year. They were lights out across the board. They're so good. They're this so is, good. This is another one of those that I was a little shocked at the number because there is so much hype around San Francisco right now. 
You wanted to talk about scheme earlier. That's right. Kyle Shanahan can put together a game plan. Period. Now, it, Super Bowl aside, everything else this dude has done has worked. Oh, absolutely. So, but this is also the Vikings. That's right. No, he hasn't played a team like this. Jimmy hasn't played a team like this. No. He just, he just hasn't. They're going to be prepared. They're going to be just as well coached, if not more prepared and more co- better, now they, better coached. T- the second to last game last season, they did hang 44 on the Jags. But the Jags had already wrapped up. Like, they'd already won the division. Oh, yeah. No, the Jags had nothing to play for. Yeah. So, and that game was at home. This is going to be on the road. Minnesota fans are going to be fired up. Like, I love the Vikings well, here. The one thing, and there's a, there's a big piece of this pie, too. Kyle Shanahan likes to throw the ball to the running back. He always has. He went out and got in. Uh, and McKinnon. An unbelievable running back. Yeah. And McKinnon, he's out for the season now. And Towards and, ACL yeah, in the last that, play of practice. Yep. And so, so that's, I mean, you're just not going to move Alf Morris off the street and, and you know, Matt Breida in and say, all right, you're going to take his place. I just, it don't work. It's going to matter against a team like Minnesota. You might be able to do that stuff when you're playing some lesser opponents. Yeah, not against Minnesota. Uh, Oh, hang on. We we didn't really make a pick on the Cleveland game. I've made it clear. I've made it abundantly clear. You're you're going with the Cleveland. It is not. This is not a fandom thing. I think Todd Haley has something to prove, and I got a screenshot today that I was sending to my friends in Cleveland. Miles Garrett came out and said. Ben and I didn't get to meet last year because Miles <laughs> got hurt and couldn't play. I'm really, I'm really interested. I'm really interested in introducing myself to him. That's uh, that's cute. That's cute. And I, I, and I think Ben should be afraid. I think that there is way too much hype on the Browns right now. Until they show me that they can beat the Steelers, when Miles Garrett tears Big Ben in half, that's that's fine. Then then then. I guess Landry Jones isn't there anymore. Josh Dobbs can Josh can Dobbs or Mason Rudolph, <laughs> one or the other. Either way, uh, I'll take the Steelers here. I'll go the opposite of you. I think they're going to win, and I think they're going to be double digit wins. I mean, I wish this was the Browns. A, I wish this was an old school Steelers minus seven, and I could get plus three eighty on the money line. I think I think Cleveland's going to kick their ass. Did you take them on the money line? I'm last absolutely going to take them. I haven't yet. I'm okay. going to take them on the money line. I want to get closer to the game. I want the. I want. I think the number is going to get bigger as we, as soon as Le'Veon reports, which I think he's going to eventually. I think the money line is going to go up, and I think the spread's going to go up. All right, who are you taking in uh, the Vikings 49ers? I'm. I'm taking. What's the What's the spread right now? Six. I'm going. I'm going to lay the six. I'm going to. I'm, I'm laying the six as well. Going with the Vikings. Chiefs at the Chargers. Chargers minus three. Over under is 47 and a half. Sunday, September 9th, 3.05 p.m. Central Time on CBS at the Stub Hub Center in Carson, California. You know how many people can fit into the Stub Hub Center? 29,000. 27,000. I knew it was in the 20s. And it won't even be full. No, nah, that's all right. But that's fine. Guess who won't be there? 70,000 Chiefs fans like Arrowhead. That's true. That's true. Pat Mahomes' second road start, his second start ever. He started last season's finale at Denver. Um, but his his second start is really in a non hostile uh, environment. That's good. The Chargers won nine of their last twelve and six of their last seven. Their only loss was a thirty to thirteen beatdown at Kansas City last year. The Chiefs beat them both times last season. Chiefs have got weapons all over the field, but the Chargers have got a defense and they have got a veteran quarterback that has been in these kind of situations. I'm going to tell you this: the the fans. Might not be hostile, but uh, Bosa. Bosa and Ingram might have something to say about the hostility that Patrick Mahomes yeah. is about to face. That is going to be the best one-two pass rush combination in all of football this year. Watch it closely. I don't want to be any of the quarterbacks in that division. I I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, um, you know how much I love this Chargers team. I think they're going to be unbelievably good. I like the Chargers in this spot, especially because I, Pat Mahomes, like while well, he did get to play a little bit last year, this is a different ball game. This is his team now, and I think it takes some time, especially against a defense like this. The pressure that he's going to feel is 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 going to be rough. It's going to yeah, be real. It really is. 
It really is. Also, Antonio Gates reported to camp today. He's going to yep. play. He, he I don't know what kind of shape he's in or how well he's going to be for week one. Or yeah, he's but he's, he's a Hall of Famer. But he's there. He's a big target to just, when they get in the red zone, throw it up, let him box somebody out and go up and get the ball. I agree. Uh, number five, Bears at the Packers. Packers a seven-and-a-half-point favorite. That actually came down since the Khalil Mack news. Um, over under is 48. Sunday, September 9th, it is the 7.20 p.m. Sunday night football game on NBC from Lambeau Field in Green Bay, the frozen tundra in September. <laughs> I'm, you Listen, we haven't talked a lot because all this stuff happened after we did our last show and whatever for this week. I am so excited about the Khalil Mack trade. Oh, I know. Him and Roquan Smith is are going to that's that's another Ro, world. Roquan's gonna take a little bit because he's playing middle linebacker, you know, in the NFL. That's a that's a coaching quarterback on the field for the defense position. It's gonna take him a little while. But but those two team those two guys are gonna wreck this conference. The Vikings and the Bears defense are getting scary. If I'm Aaron Rodgers, I, I've told you before, I don't think he can make 16 games anymore. He's just shown he's fragile, he's frail, and he plays too reckless with running the football. And Khalil Mack doesn't help. i tell you what I'm excited about. Anthony Miller. Oh, no. Against that Packers Absolutely. secondary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's because the, the Packers always Trubisky, have secondary problems. They're going to run RPOs, which means Mitch Trubisky's completion percentage is going to go from like 40% what it was last year to in the high 70s because that's yeah. what happens in the RPOs. And you've got an athletic dude. I know everybody's talking about the signing of Allen Robinson. You've got an athletic dude that's not afraid to go across the middle in yep. Anthony Miller. And then not only that, we've talked about this before. I believe with these new rules in the NFL that – Players are, are going to be able to p go in the middle of the field. If you're a receiver and you're not afraid to go across the middle, it's going to be wide open for you. And I think I think scoring is going to be crazy high. Um, I think it's going to be there for the taking. I love athletic receivers like Miller that are going to be able to make plays. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Um, the biggest news, of course, Khalil Mack. We talked about that. Signed to an extension. Uh I mean, the Bears have way more offensive weapons for Trubisky. The question to me, the biggest question is, can Aaron Rodgers still win with a mediocre roster? I, that's the question all the time, though. He just doesn't have anybody on his team. No, he really doesn't. As he, much he as was, I crap on him as a person, he's still an unbelievable quarterback. His his team is just not great. But he just signed an extension with him. Thirty-three and a half million dollars a year for took, what? Four he, years. He took almost twenty percent of the salary cap. Yeah, One which guy. means it's very difficult. So the rest of that team, yeah, not going to get any better anytime soon. You got that right. I like the Bears here. I love the Bears. I will be taking the Bears, which with which some, scares me a little bit with some money line action. The Packers are going to open up with two home games. They're going to have the Bears, which I thought would be a little bit easier than it's going to be. Mac will change that drastically. And then the Vikings week two. How how can like how much of an impact can Mac have? I don't I don't know with only being there for a week to train. He hasn't been any training camp, so I don't know what shape he is in. All these guys have great trainers and they, they are in incredible shape for normal people. But every coach in the history of the world will tell you you can't get in football shape until you're actually playing football. All the working out will never do anything for you. I'm worried about Josh. Uh, Gordon for that. Khalil Mack, very much in the same boat. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell. That's why I'm not really afraid of him week one. Um, I don't know the answer. He plays a position that's different than the two offensive skill positions. It's about yeah. brute strength, short bursts of speed. Those other guys are going to have to do a lot of cutting and slashing, which is really scary for hamstrings. He's not going to have that problem. Yeah. He's still real strong. They're you, the monster the midway. He's a monster that they've added. Do you like the unders in a lot of these games? Nope. No? You like I overs. I normally am an under better. You know that. Week one, two, and three, I think scoring is going to be up because of these rules. I think teams are going to get extra downs, extra set of downs because of all the personal fouls that are going to be called. Now, I might be wrong, and the, and the refs might keep the, the hankies in the pocket, but – 
But if, they haven't if, thus far. If they call it like they've done it in preseason, man, I, I think we can have some crazy high-scoring games. We got three honorable mention games that didn't quite make our top five. We'll just run through these because none of them are. Not not huge games, but there's interesting stuff. Texans at the Patriots. Patriots opened up a six-point favorite. Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watts are back from injury. Uh, the Pats returned to Foxborough after they lost the Super Bowl. Have we figured out what the Pats are going to do on offense? Or on defense, for that matter? I follow this team crazy close. I have no idea what they're going to look like offensively. I mean, I... Yeah, I'm, I, I'll tell you Everybody this. Everybody is working. Tom Brady is still the quarterback, so right. like they're no, going to be fine. I'm, I'm, Whatever I'm they do, good with, I'm good with twelve. But like other than that, everyone's assuming Chris Hogan's going to be a monster. Man, if Cordell Patterson came out and looked like the next Randy Moss, it would not shock me, man. It just wouldn't. No, it wouldn't shock me either. That's I, I brought him up to you in the previews. Yeah. Uh, Jags at the Giants. Jags are a three point favorite on the road. Tom Coughlin going back to New York. Believe that Jalen Ramsey versus Eli Manning makes this immensely more entertaining because of Jalen Ramsey's talk. We we never really talked about this. Who is he? We didn't cover any news. We we're doing previews. Who is he gonna? Who's he gonna cover? He's not covering Odell. I I think he probably would. You think he's gonna follow Odell, or yeah. is he gonna go to a side? I think he's gonna follow uh, Odell. I think I think he will play man on man with him, pretty much the whole game. He's so much bigger than Odell, but I don't know that he's anywhere close to as fast. I don't think he's as fast. But I don't know if there's many people in the league that's as fast as Odell. That, see, that's the point. So, um, Saquon Barkley, his first game. OBJ is back. We're going to uh, find out if Barkley's real or not because he's going to go up against the defense. I believe that. Can and Blake Bortles throw the football? That's the question right now. I don't know that he needs to. Like, remember, the Jags' defense is awesome, but they are beatable. This team went 10-6 oh, yeah. and six last year. It wasn't like they were 14-2. and two. Well, so, but they got Blake Bortles as a quarterback. He's never going to go fourteen and two. That's what I'm saying. This is a, it's a good spot. We'll see. Finally, Rams at the Raiders Monday night headliner. Joe Tessitore, Booger McFarland, Jason Witten. They are uh, they are making their debut, like real official debut live in Oakland. Uh, can all of these one year contracts actually work for the Rams? Uh, John Gruden's first game since December 28, two thousand eight. By the way, I went back and checked that. Like 2008 was his last season. He started out nine and three that year, and then lost the last four games. <laughs> I could not believe it. Uh, will Sean McVay be as successful now that teams have a full year of film? Like, there's a lot of questions about this game. I, the Rams, I thought, would be a much bigger favorite here. I'm scared to touch this game because I, I feel like the Rams should be a way bigger favorite. It's it's four and a half. The line is four and a half. At Oakland on a Monday night. I will be betting the over in this game, no question about it. I don't think the Raiders are going to be able to stop anybody. Last year with Mac, they were the 29th best defense in the league. Yeah. Adding John Gruden, they become like the 30th best defense in the league. They get rid of Mac, down to the 32nd best defense in the league. That I just I just don't give them any respect. They didn't add anybody. This is the oldest team in the league. The youngest guy on their team is Amari Cooper. That's going to be a starter. That's crazy. Derek Carr, I mean, if he could get back into – but, see, that's the thing. Amari Cooper, not good against press coverage. What's he about to get? A lot of press coverage. Because who else are they throwing to? Jordy? Jordy can't get open. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a problem. It is a problem. This is a young man's game, and why John Gruden thinks he can just make it an old man's game is beyond me. You got me. All right, you guys know what's up. We're giving you all the info you need to be a winner. Head down to Tunica. Get some action down on your favorite plays. As always, you can visit tunicatravel.com for more information. You can also get previews, gambling picks, all sorts of stuff over at winningcureseverything.com.